Sunday and welcome back to the vlog. Today is deadlift day, so I've got my deadlift braids on. She really does. She's really embracing the role of looking like Spinelli from Recess. Somebody commented on one of our most recent videos that our YouTube channel is, is as if Bella Hadid and Spinelli from Recess have a YouTube channel together. So I don't know, we don't actually know who they were referring to, but I just think she might be Spinelli. And that doesn't mean I'm Bella, but she's really Spinelli. You're so Spinelli. I'm gonna go with this, she's Spinelli. Anyway, don't deny, I don't deny that one. We live in the Midwest, so if you're wondering, yes, we did get more snow. It's freezing outside. Burst on my Gucci boots. So we're gonna get more steps in today at the gym. Today's very exciting. Very exciting because we're going to the gym and then we're gonna have some good eats and later on today we're gonna talk we're about gonna the talk doctors. About so we're, yeah. we recorded the doctors episode on our TV so we have it and we'll play some of the clips for you all and then we'll film some responses to some of the ridiculous questions some that they asked. Salty questions. Uh, speaking of salty, Ashley's bone broth batch she finally remembered to turn on and Cecilia here smells like pretzels. I'm gonna let it sit for 30 hours today. So there's a very strong vent that goes into my room at night it and so it just good. makes my room smell like bone broth and pretzels. It smells so it's good. not that bad. So yeah, have a great day. in the gym just want to clarify one thing about deficit deadlifts so you guys will notice throughout the program we include these supplemental exercises so there's slight variations of the main lift squat bench and deadlift with the goal in mind to improve performance on the main lift when we go back to performing them normally so deficit deadlifts specifically you guys saw I pulled from an elevated surface so we used a 25 pound plate and a 10 pound plate resulting in about a three inch deficit so the bar and the weights themselves are on the floor normally and so as a result, this will cause, this will, this means that you're pulling the weight a larger range of motion than what you would for normal deadlifts. And so deficit deadlifts is specifically targeting improved upper back strength, improved core bracing, and improved leg drive off the floor. But because it's a larger range of motion, you can't use the same amount of weight as what you would for normal deadlifts. So go down slightly in what you would normally perform deadlifts, and then we'll build on this week to week to week and then with the goal in mind once you go back to normal deadlifts it'll feel a little bit easier right off the floor you'll it'll feel uh, quite a bit faster just finished up at the gym had an excellent backside lift and I just started to think about during my lift something that 
sits heavily on my heart. So a lot of people have commented like, hey guys, please never stop sharing. Like, thank you for sharing your journey. And being on the doctors and having to re-explain our journey, like we had to create those um, YouTube videos that are like the about us, our journey, our mental health journey, and our health story. So I'll add those right here. Having to create those made us think a lot about how life used to be and the symptoms that we dealt with and what we were going through. And I think that once you feel better, like once you get rid of those symptoms, you lose sight of what life used to be like. And it's sad to me because so many people are dealing with those things every single day and are settling for it or are not. They're, no, they're accepting it as normal. Accepting it as normal when it's really not normal. And so even though we are like, 100% feeling better now and don't deal with those things anymore we will never stop sharing even if we're painted as crazy and insane for living this kind of lifestyle because if it inspires one other person to try something different for themselves to take back their health then it's so worth it to us so what is going what is through this? my noggin two times one week i'm the chauffeur what is yeah, this i got my I chauffeur didn't pay for this i i didn't pay for this either she's excellent though i think she's mad because when we rolled up to the gym I drove her car wheel over a curb. Oh. And she, <laughs> I gave that look like this. I'm a chauffeur, but I never said I was a good chauffeur, okay? You did my look. Right, it's time to eat. Okay, just whipped up a quick platter number one today. So we've got some of that kidney stew recipe, raw beef suet chunks, one raw egg yolk, some lightly seared liver, have really been feeling the seared liver lately and then some seared round steak with our chicken chopsticks. Let's see, yo. All right, so it turns out the full Doctors episode is actually up on YouTube on Dr. Paul Saladino's YouTube channel. So we'll share with you guys a few of the clips from the beginning and just kind of talk about some of the questions that they were giving us. But we'll include the full link to the video in our description below. We encourage you guys to share it with family, friends. We just want to spread the carnivore message as much as possible and then also just to show how crazy the hosts were on the Doctors episode. Yes. Okay, so starts off with a nice little story about us. Animal products has eliminated their problems. Have a look. Hey everyone, I'm Ashley and I'm Sarah, and we are sisters, best friends, and carnivores. You might be thinking, what the heck is a carnivore? I really like the taste of raw beef. I love raw egg yolks, love raw beef fat. As I go more carnivore, I actually like crave this. I'm gonna pause there briefly. So this is like one of our biggest pet peeves is this highlight on the fact that we're just eating raw meat. Raw beef soup, raw egg yolks. Raw this, raw that. That just goes back to that original Daily Mail article we were featured in where we were painted as like raw scary vampires. vampires. And like truth be told, yes, we do have several YouTube videos about raw eating to help other people who might be interested in getting into raw eating. Um, but like that's not our entire diet yet. That's the main plate that they the show only photos that they show in our intro clip are of us holding raw plates and There are plenty of, it, like what is the incentive there? There are plenty of other photos of us holding cooked food and there are plenty of other cooked food photos on our Instagram So they clearly pulled those photos strategically am I right? I think there was a little strategy there. All right, but before getting into more of the questions that they asked us, let's review briefly like how we even got on the show and where this yeah. even started. So as Sarah just brought up, we were on this really scary Daily Mail article. Um, yep. We'll include, include another description in the link below. And I think that that caught some link eyes. Link below in the description below. Yeah. Um, so it, again, that one painted us as some crazy raw eating carnivore vampires. Yeah. Um, but I think that, that caught some what attention. What happened there people. was our story was sold to the Daily Mail, and they 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 decided to retell our story for us. For us. And so they put in like raw picture, raw picture, raw picture. Only said, only raw, eat raw, raw meat, raw, raw, raw meat. This raw, and like raw, raw. Clearly, there is a reason they're doing that. So it just makes everybody who eats a carnivore diet seem unsafe because they're eating raw meat. Like, I would just like to add in here really quickly that there are more incidences of. Food illnesses from, from 
romaine, romaine lettuce. lettuce. So let's not demonize raw meat anymore, shall we? But anyways, so the doctor's producers saw that Daily Mail article and then contacted us saying, hey guys, we have an opening for an episode in a few weeks. We'd love to have you on, which was super nice. So this was last November. This was November 2018. This was right around the time that I was having my preliminary exam. So there was no way I could travel out to Hollywood. So we told the producers and they invited us to just come on via Skype, yes. which is awesome. So they were pretty accommodating in that way. But we said we were absolutely not coming on without our good friend Paul. Yeah. So that is how Paul got so we, involved. We called Dr. Paul Saldino and said, hey, do you want to come on this doctor's episode with us? We'd love to have some support. And I think it'd be cool to have a doctor's like, um, opinion on this. So yeah. invited Paul and the producers confirmed it was going to be us and Paul. They did not tell us that there was going to be like an insane amount of other doctors on the other side who are clearly campaigning for the vegan lifestyle. So you've got Dr. Khan, the crazy blonde curly hair. I don't know who she is or where she came from. Hold on. There was a judge. There was a judge. Like there for was a what judge. reason was there a judge? To add theatrics. Yeah. It was very interesting. We did not know that that was like we didn't know it was going to be what was like five exactly five or six. So anyways, there's Sarah Paul. and I. Sarah and I skyped in, and then Paul was actually at the Hollywood theater, whatever it was. Yes. Um, so yeah, they let us talk in the beginning. So they asked us some questions. So then they muted us. Literally, we were trying to talk and contribute, and we were muted throughout the entire middle segment. And then they brought us on again at the end. All right. So when we were allowed to talk, they asked us some questions. They interviewed us, and it was very clear from the beginning what their agenda was. They had no interest in learning how we've actually benefited benefited from this way of life, and instead wanted to try to not only just target us as extreme extremist crazy people, but also that we were really troubled. Right? Yes. Yeah. One of the questions was directly related to our past with dealing with eating disorders and completely disrespectful. There, I just, so like for context, I'm 23 and she's 27 and I said this in the show, we haven't dealt with eating disorders for a good like eight to, eight ten, to years. ten years. And so the fact that they dug around in our social media to find out that information Stopped in the first place us. to then bring it up on live TV broadcasting, it was a little bit just like out of left field. Are you trying to pick on us? Is so, that your goal? The goal, which is very clear, because carnivore is such a restrictive diet in a way, because it's very, it's meat, it's meat only, it's animal based only. And so some people do see that as very restrictive. And many people who do have eating disorders may go to it because it's a sense of comfort, like, oh, if they're afraid of carbs, sure. And those people, they likely need some assistance in this diet, but that is not everybody on carnivore. There is so much more to carnivore than coming there for some sort of like calorie reduction or avoiding carbs or losing weight. Personally, for both Ashley and myself, which they didn't let us explain this on the show, after they had already said like, oh, I'm sure they started feeling better because they were in a, they were losing weight and inflammation was going down because, because they, they were, were a eating calorie a deficit. Ashley and I have both been in False. a cal caloric surplus for the entire time we've been on carnivore. We've both put on a few different, I gained a few 11 different, pounds. A few pounds, hopefully mostly muscle because we've been killing it in the gym, but we eat in a caloric surplus. We eat in excess of fat. There is no losing weight. That's not what is going on here. No. But they liked to paint that picture as if we were on some super low calorie diet, eating disordered, troubled children. And that, like, it's, it's very no. clear that they're scared, right? Because this movement is paradigm shifting, will shatter all the things that they believe support their money is loaded into, right? So of course they had to come in with this episode locked and loaded, ready to go. Here's another question that kind of... You were having, you felt that you were sick, you felt that you were off, you mentioned that you thought you may have an autoimmune or a connective tissue disorder. Tell us about the symptoms you had when they started and, and why you thought that in fact was what you had. So right there he's already trying to tell me you're a little misguided. You think you might have thought have maybe have had something because of your symptoms. Saying like please ignore the fact that you were actually diagnosed with it and let me tell you that maybe you were misguided Honey. and thinking that what you thought you might have been going through couldn't have been possibly cured by your diet. I like at that moment while he was asking that question, I was just like, here he goes. Rude. Here he goes. He's trying. So, okay. 
we sent them our blood work yeah. and our diagnosis yeah. from my rheumatologist saying exactly what I had. So I'm a little confused where the confusion was, where he's thinking like, hmm, what she thought you had. Like, no, I'm pretty sure that my blood work wasn't lying. My rheumatologist, even though she, I didn't end up listening to her guidance, that, like just let that be as it is. We went a different route. I don't think she was lying to me when she told me what I was going through. So I just didn't appreciate and that. We also sent them uh, blood work that showed, okay, there were ANA markers, so there was markers of autoimmune inflammation, and then there are now, there's now blood work showing no ANA, no inflammation, and they didn't bring that up at all, which demonstrates that we reversed our autoimmune symptoms and conditions. So we've, we've been explaining that we've reduced our symptoms, but there's also blood work documenting that we have as well, and they didn't bring that up at all. We sent that to them too. Yeah. yeah. So, and then another another question, or rather, this isn't even a question. This was when we were muted, and the blonde hair doctor or nutritionist, whatever she was, she basically played this pity, like I am their mom and I pity them, like I, I like a safety over us. This is when we were muted to Paul and just putting all the blame on Paul, saying like these girls are gonna get cancer, this is a lifestyle for them. How could you do this to them? How could you lead them down this path? First off, I'm pretty sure there's freedom of choice and Ashley and I came to this lifestyle on our own, but Dick Paul was a huge influence in getting here, but he is not some person to blame. And then to bluntly tell somebody on TV, again, that they're going to get cancer, I just thought that was a little bit just uncalled for. I don't, like how how is one supposed to reply to that? Oh. I'm sorry, we couldn't reply to that because yeah. we were muted. Muted. So. Um, but then the entire middle segment, they kind of attack Paul and do not give him a fair chance to explain anything. They were just having a debate on emotions and feelings where Paul was trying to bring up science. And I really give it to Paul. He was Credit to Paul. Yeah, I w he was placed in a really difficult situation where they were just constantly yelling and screaming at him. We don't have enough time to review all of that segment in this video, but he is gonna be posting his own response video coming up. But props to you, Paul, for holding ground and not answering at the same yelling pitch tone Why as are you yelling? what they were doing. So make sure you guys check out this video. We don't feel wait, like wait, we wait, were I given- I wanna one more thing. Okay. So another ironic thing was the preview for the episode was listed under safety at first, so it wasn't listed under nutrition, it wasn't listed under health, it is now. It was listed under safety. And what they were trying to say was, how, is eating an all meat, they bluntly said this, is eating an all meat diet safe? But a really ironic comment that we got on Instagram, which I love this, was, well, was having an autoimmune condition safe? So should I stop eating an all meat diet because it's potentially unsafe and go back to what I was doing before and feel like I re-accept my autoimmune condition? Is that safer? Like should I, is that a good idea? I don't understand, but it's fine. Anyway, ultimately really grateful that we got the opportunity to represent the carnivore community on TV and I, we really do hope that it opens up more people's eyes to this lifestyle and how powerful it can be. It's not for everybody, yeah. but it really is powerful and that's what we wanted to spread. And even though we weren't, we feel like we weren't given like the full opportunity to talk about the benefits and how it's changed our life, we hope that maybe just a few people will see the doctor's episode and say, hey, what is this carn what is this carnivore thing? And enter the community and then be exposed to all these amazing people who are thriving, kicking major butt, and you can't deny these results. But anyways. So yeah, thank you guys for all the support if you like commented or messaged us about this episode. It was lots of fun. And I yeah, what I've learned the most out of this is one, how much of an uphill battle we still have to yeah. show that this movement is worthwhile, beneficial, carnivore is an optimal way of life for some people um, but also to how amazing this community is thank you guys so much for all of your comments concerns reaching out asking for okay I promise you guys we are okay we left the haters and that bitch sadness back in 2019 so don't worry we're, we're doing great all right after an afternoon of getting some work done we are rounding out the day with a bumpin platter, platter number, number two. two you guys will probably notice a trend this is like our staple platter but it's really simple and easy to make so yeah if we zoom in we've got chuck stick protein and fat 
Yep. We got two over easy eggs that look like boobies, protein, and fat. We got a side plate of raw beef suet fat. fat. And then we got leftover kidney stew and some bone broth, of course. Everything seasoned with Redmond sea salt. All right, so we are going to wrap up this evening by enjoying this bump and platter and watching the new Taylor Swift documentary. If you guys have not yet subscribed, click that button right there and hit the like button. And until next time, we'll see you guys in the morning. Behave like an angel.